let's start with the first topic in this video series, which is going to be sensing the moment. So what does this mean? What do I mean when I say sensing the moment, right? How to sense the moment in a practical game, right? And this is not a, a, an easy uh, question to answer because it's just, you know, it, it, there isn't no, like there is no clear cut way to, to answer it. One way to answer it is to realize uh, when your opponent's pieces, you know, standing in, in a, in a, in a, on, on the wrong squares, for example, um, and, um, and, you know, or, or, you know, when, when you get that sensation of, okay, there has to be something here. And, um, so doing a practical game, okay, let's, let's talk about that. What happens in a practical game, right? Because in a practical game, nobody will say, hey, you should look for a move here, right? There is no coach behind you. There is no one behind you. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to be behind you saying, oh, hey, this is the moment. It doesn't really work that way. So you have to figure out yourself. And so what I recommend you and what I'm going to be uh, talking about in, in this um, episode, let's say, is when you know or when you feel like there is something in the air then you should always look for something how do you know when when something in the air once again it's a uh, not an easy uh easy question to answer but of course by first off of course um, go going over this uh, recording and um, and training technical exercises and then uh, just and just going over some of these ideas and then games over and over again and of course uh, you might just improve in this uh, portion okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a couple of games where uh, where uh, one player just senses the moment and grabs the opportunity immediately and just grabs the initiative and boom, the game finishes very, very quickly. Okay, so the first game is going to be between Karras Paul uh, against Botvinnik. Obviously, very, very, very strong players. Um, the game started out with C4. I'm going to uh, flip the board because we are... Um, uh, looking at this from uh, Black's perspective. So C4 happened and uh, Knight F6, D4, E6, Knight C3, Bishop B4. So we are looking at the uh, Nimzo Indian variation, of course. Uh, many, many lines here with uh, Queen C2, F3, E3, Knight F3, all kinds of lines, Bishop G5s, of course, um, even G3. See, it's, it's a very, very complex um, uh, line. White decided uh, to play one of the, 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 the crowd favorites. Uh, which is queen c2, this is a queen c2, Nimzo Indian, d5, okay, so black has many responses um, other than d5, so of course black can play c5, castle is a very popular move nowadays, and for many, many years now, and of course d5, these are the, the top three moves, I guess, so d5 takes, takes, and now bishop g5. This is still theory. This is um, this is still you know book moves. So let's just uh, continue with the game. So h6. So this is uh, kind of the first critical moment in the game uh, when it comes to um, opening theory. You can play h6, and you can start with c immediately with c5. So the reason, the reasoning behind c5 is I, I want to break up the center as fast as possible and I don't want to allow white to take here on f6. I mean, you can still take on f6 after c5, but it's just not going to be 
the same. So here after h6, white decided to play bishop h4, which is a completely you know normal move and it's a fine move. It just you know allows white to take on f6. Is it a good line? Uh, it's an okay line. I, I don't think there is an advantage for for white uh, nor for uh, black, but it's um, it's more of a solid uh, opening. But white was uh, ready for for a fight, and uh, bishop h4 happened. Now uh, c5. Okay. So obviously this game was played uh, back in 1941. So nowadays in, in 2021, obviously we know that this move that Kers, um, Kers is playing, no, Long Castle, was a mistake. But back in the day it was not super obvious. Okay, so Bishop takes c3. Queen takes c3, and now g5. Interesting move. Interesting move to um, kind of weaken. It, it weakens the, uh, the the pawn structure, um, the position in front of the king. So it's it's a little weird, but you'll see many many moves like this throughout the whole course. Uh, the reasoning. You just be active okay it's it's all about being active being forceful uh grabbing the initiative putting pressure on the opponent all day every day every single move or at least that's our goal okay bishop g3 pawn takes queen takes and of course another tempo okay what happened in the game so far black basically um gave up the the, the strategic side of the game, right? Uh, because the pawn structure is not that great. But, of course, um, black just uh, gained crucial, crucial tempos. And so black is in a big lead in development. And actually, you know, it's, it's funny enough because uh, even though white has castled on the queen side, White's king is actually a lot weaker than Black's king in the center, and we're gonna see why. And the 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 main reason is that uh, the rook can come into play with rook c8 and just create an, an enormous amount of pressure on the c file. So queen a4, and now a good move happened. Um, if you saw my previous um, video course then you know that I like to uh, stop a little bit and of course give you some time to uh, figure out what to do. So this is a critical uh, moment in, in the position um, where you can where you can play a very strong move. So um, if you feel like stop the video and just think uh, think a little bit and uh, try to find the strongest continuation here. So if you know, um, or if you remember uh, what I said earlier about the king, right? So the king here on the queen side is uh, rather weak because it can face many issues on the C file, but if, if it manages uh, to escape uh, to b1 and to a1, then it would be actually okay. So black uh, plays it very uh, in a very clever way and plays bishop f5. Reasoning um, just completely stops king b1. Okay, so he doesn't allow king b1, and basically the king is stuck here on c1, and that is gonna be a big big advantage for black e3 of course white uh, tries to develop finish development and and maybe prepare bishop d3 in order to neutralize this very annoying active attacking bishop here on f5 and now rook c8 
of course, Black is uh, continuing uh, with the plan. Obviously, wanna create a big threat, a big attack on uh, on the sea file against the king with all sorts of uh, div um, discovered attack. Of course, we can't really jump away with our knight because it is pinned at the moment, but still it is uh, it is a threat later on. So bishop d3 happened. Um, once again, the reasoning is that because the knight on c6 uh, can really move, now he, he just, uh, he tries to take advantage of it. So, uh, and, you know, tries to, as I said, neutralize a an attacking piece so queen d7 king b1 now it looks like white manages to uh to go away but because of the lack of development white is gonna be in uh worlds of trouble okay take six and now of course king f queen f5 queen f5 now as you can see uh the attack on d3 is very forcing and of course the biggest problem in in white's position is not just the king right the king is weak on b1 that's for sure but also you know still the lack of development is is so visible it is one of if not the biggest problem in uh, white's camp okay so and as you guys can see Black is doing a great job uh, in terms of, you know, putting pressure on the opponent, okay? If we're talking about, you know, in, in, if we're talking about initiative and we're trying to um, approach it in a, in a practical um, way, right? My goal is, even though initiative, it's, 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 a, it's a broad idea or it's like an idea that um not that easy to grasp i i'm, I'm still i'm still trying to give you some practical ideas practical tips of how to you know be active and just uh keep the initiative going and one idea is to always keep your opponent busy right just keep putting pressure keep putting pressure uh move after move move after move so the rook is hanging on d3 white has to protect it right and you know the problem with with protecting the rook uh for white is that white doesn't have a chance for at least for another move to finish development with the knight and with the with the other rook on uh, in the corner so he was he was like okay i don't want to do it right i don't i don't even have a a good way to actually protect the rook and that's like one issue right because let's say i go back to d1 what happens if uh to if i go back to d1 i can just simply play knight b4 and now the rook is just simply overloaded uh the pin on this diagonal you know it's just very bad uh and basically you just uh lost your rook so that's an issue uh same thing happens after queen c2 uh, because now knight b4 is a fork and you can't take my rook on c8 because the queen protects it, okay, backwards. So white was like, okay, this is uh, uh, my chance, or it wasn't really a chance, but this is this is one opportunity to, to get the initiative back or uh, turn things around a little bit and he decided to continue with, with e4. Okay, uh, knight takes c4. Obviously, uh, I'm not trading queens. Uh, the queen right now in my position is a big, big asset. I don't want to trade off uh, this important piece. Uh, keep the initiative going. Keep uh, the position alive. Bring another piece into the attack. The knight from X f6 now becomes very, very strong. King a1 finally manages to uh, go away from uh, from this pin, from this diagonal, of course, uh, white had to face some annoying threats with a knight c5, for example, 
And um, yeah, so once again, why didn't have a free move uh, where he was able to continue with the development or finish with the development. So castle, uh, putting uh, the castle away here, it's just totally safe to castle, right? You can't really take advantage of this weak pawn structure. Your pieces are not even developed. Uh, black is super comfortable to, to castle now. And as you can see, by being active, by being forceful, by, by grabbing the initiative, uh, black basically just ended up with um, good peace control uh, and just, you know, material advantage, right? I, I do have a pawn advantage on, on d5. So uh, rook d1 happened. What happens? So he went back, he, he moved away from the uh, from the pin, from the discovered attack, what happens if I play knight e2? Uh, because it would be logical to now finally to just, um, you know, finish development. But after knight c5, the game is pretty much over, okay? So um, that's why castle was uh, was a smart move to make because he, he just avoids uh, all kinds of checks, uh, either from rook e3 or with a queen. And now uh, the threat is just uh, unbearable, right? So uh, rook d1 happened, but now b5. Once again, beautiful move, beautiful, beautiful move. Um, why is that? Why is that? Because black's position is fantastic, okay? Black's position is very good, but he doesn't want to, you know, uh, slow down. He doesn't want the opponent to have a move or two moves where he can relax. Okay. He has the opportunity now. He has uh, awesome pieces. White has um, horrible piece development. His king is weak. His back rank, <clears throat> back rank is weak. So he takes advantage of it. Another uh, good example, uh, the second one basically in the game uh, where just basically black, black sends the, the opportunity, sends the moment, okay, hey, this is, this is another good time to uh, increase the pressure. Why? Because if, if let's say, white just uh, manages to play something like knight f3, uh, brings the rook into the game and, and somehow somehow um, stitches the position together it it's actually okay um, sure you still have to you still got to deal with the uh, pawn deficit but still it just uh, it's gonna be a different game but after b5 now it's really really bad why because once again all kinds of uh, uh, threats, keeping the initiative alive, keeping the activity alive. Um, in the game, why decided to take? Eh, there was no uh, real difference because if, let's say, if I go back here, I can still play knight d4. And as I mentioned, you know, the back rank is really weak, right? Now the rook on 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 the c file is going to be crazy. You can't really take. If you take here, I can just simply give you a checkmate, and that's game. That looks awesome. And otherwise, I'm just uh, I'm just threatening you with knight c2 with a nice fork. Um, and the queen is going to be in danger. So he decided to take on b5, but uh, no surprise here. Black continued with knight d4, another tempo, right? Not slowing down, very, very smart. Queen d3, and now the game is going to be over in two moves because after knight c2, king b1, uh, knight b4, the game is over. Why is that? Because the uh the discovered attack is gonna be uh is gonna be gg right because you have to move your queen now uh away from this diagonal so let's say i'm gonna attack your queen for example offering an exchange would be, would be great for white but of course we are not trading here we can give a discovered attack discovered check actually with a double check right with knight d2 and knight d3 so both moves are completely winning and that is pretty much uh game 
Okay, and by the way, it's, it's actually pretty nice. Uh, this is actually going to be a checkmate. You can even be uh, fancier and, and uh, sacrifice even your queen uh, if you want to, but uh, that's, uh, that's really just uh, the icing on the cake. So beautiful game, a very nice example by Botvinnik. Um, yeah, he sensed uh, uh, the moment in, in the game. Uh, at least two times and didn't have uh, didn't allow uh, the opponent to uh, to relax or improve the position as, as you can see basically in the final uh, position right the the pieces are still in their original place so that is that is pretty bad okay awesome so let's move on to the next game let's go so this is gonna be a game uh, from Fisher Okay, so um, it, this is uh, this game was played by a young Fisher. Okay, so he was really young here. He was around 16 years old, and um, but he plays a fantastic games when uh, he plays a, a fantastic game when it comes to initiative and sensing the moment and just realizing, hey, there might just be something here. I know there is something in the air here. Let's check out that moment. So it was a Grunfeld um, opening from a different uh, move order. So the the usual um, the, the the classical way of of uh, doing uh, Grunfeld is d4, knight f6, c4, g6. But this is uh, a move order from from the English opening. But that's okay. Of course. Uh, d4 the only uh, issue let's say issue if you're actually going for the Grunfeld uh, as black you gotta make sure that you play five you play d5 as as almost fast as possible after knight f6 and g6 because if not for example against this setup you can't really play this setup if if you want to play Grunfeld because white can play some like e4 and now uh, what happens is uh, is that white transposes into a either a king's indian or a marozzi system or a marozzi setup then it's not going to white is not uh going to allow d5 to happen but that's a uh that's a a risk uh, that Fisher was willing to take. Of course, he was he was very very good at King's Indian structure, so he was he was okay with allowing e4. And White decides to play d4 castle. Still e4 uh, still e4 would be uh, King's Indian. White decided to play bishop f4 and now d5. Okay, so Black decided to uh, play the Grunfeld uh, eventually. Okay, queen b3. This is obviously a sideline for for white. Uh, okay, line is just uh, obviously not the most uh, popular one. So takes takes, and now the pawn was hanging on on c7. So black decided to protect it by moving the pawn. Okay, so e4. It's a clever uh, move to make, right? Black allows you. Uh, to occupy the center, why not capture it? Why not occupy it? Sure, it makes a lot of sense. Knight bd7 uh, happened. Just developing, of course. Black could have uh, could have won a tempo here with bishop b6. Uh, that, of course, uh, would have been a relatively completely different game. Um, so he decided to play knight bd7. It's still a good move, right? Because I can. I'm, I'm actually threatening you uh, with knight b6 winning a tempo. That makes sense. Rook d1, and now knight b6. Okay, winning the tempo that makes a lot of sense. Queen c5. Okay, so uh, bishop g4, finishing the development. Um, Fisher is playing by the book right basically or you know follows the principles and um his his play is uh logical easy to follow easy to understand 
uh, it's it's something that we should all, always follow, even if we know the opening. Um, we are definitely aiming for this, not this setup, but this uh, this kind of a play, right? Just castle, uh, if we can, occupy the center, uh, bring, bring out all of our pieces. So that's something that we always want to do. So bishop g4 and now bishop g5. And this is basically, this was basically the mistake that uh, uh, allowed Fisher to be, let's say, creative and active and, and grab, the, grab the initiative and grab the opportunity. Okay, so why did Fisher uh, feel like there is a chance here? Why did he think that, okay, there might just be something in the air, hanging in the air, right? He just sensed the moment, mm, why? The reasoning is very easy, actually. In general, a bad idea or a bad idea to play with the same piece twice, right? Especially in the early phase of the opening. So now at least this is like one, for example, one um, idea or one tip that you can look out for. If, if your opponent does something iffy with the pieces with way too many times, then that might be your uh, your calling. Okay, another um, idea, right? The king is still in the center, the rook is still in the corner, the bishop's still on f1. So white is lacking development. Of course, white has the uh, the center, but he pays the price for it. Okay, he definitely pays the price for it. And of course, playing bishop g5 was just another um, another little like a spark basically uh, that basically started the fire uh, and uh, so this is a difficult position uh, a crucial position um, pause the video think about the move it's gonna be a crazy one um, knight a4 this is the move that he played and I just remembered actually uh, I think earlier um, or before this game, I mentioned that Fisher was 16, and and now I just remember that uh, Fisher was actually around 13 at this point. Okay, when he played this game, he was around 13 years old, and finding this um, uh, move at 13, it's it's uh, absolutely awesome. So, of course, he was a very talented. Uh, guy, so his his intuition uh, was uh, was very developed, obviously early on, um, and of course, you know I I I, I can't tell you if uh, how how good you are, how talented you are, but as I said, by um, by analyzing these games and and by just learning about these tips, these ideas uh, might just improve your intuition as well. Uh, so knight a4, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful move. Um, white couldn't really take on a4. It is easy to see that after knight a4, uh, black can just simply uh, take on e4. And now bishop e7, and just simply knight c5, bishop d8, and knight a4. And the position is horrible, horrible horrible for, for white. The pawn structure is in ruins. Uh, the d4 pawn is um, is an isolated pawn. That's bad. b2 pawn is hanging. The knight on f3 is under attack uh, and black is threatening to create a an even worse pawn structure. The bishop is hanging. Uh, the king is still in the center. Uh, the pieces here are still in its original uh, squares. Looking bad. Looking real bad. So, he couldn't really take, um, so he decided to go back to a3, and now takes, b takes, and now knight a4. Once again, uh, I would say almost a crazy move, right? Because it's just, once again, just a, just a, uh, it looks like an, an exchange sacrifice. Is it really? And yes and no. 
but the, the but the most important thing is that blacks keep the initiative right black keeps the initiative and keeps going keeps the position alive uh doesn't allow uh white to um to finish development and to castle and just uh, consolidate uh the position and and uh so same idea here in this game uh just like what happened in the botvinny game no rest no time to relax for white 94 right and yes sacrificing an exchange is it a lot can be can be but if your evaluation in this position is correct you can see that you get so much back in return uh, it's definitely worth it so bishop e7 uh, now queen b6 moving away so uh why decided actually to not take on f8 which was actually clever uh if white takes on f8 i can just simply take back and after queen b3 i i take on on c3 and that is a big problem why because if you take here i get to pin your queen and actually win your uh queen and after takes takes now the rook is hanging the pawn is hanging uh the pieces are not developed your king is still in the center yes i i am a exchange down does it matter no the game is pretty much over because i am just overwhelming my opponent with the activity of my position so that is crazy uh why decided to not take actually decided to continue with the development that's a smart uh decision now knight c3 still um the the trick works why first of all we, one of the the main reasons right I, I i i mentioned earlier the king is still in the in the center so uh white gets punished for it what if i take here what if i take on c3 i can play just simply rook e8 uh pin the bishop and just attack it one more time with this or this or even queen c7 and with a bishop pair with uh uh with material advantage white is just uh losing black is uh is in um is in a big advantage so <clears throat> bishop c5 but this was the move that that you know uh fisher had to see okay fisher had to see because it's a beautiful uh in between move by white so and if you just move away with your queen i can just simply take your uh knight on c3 so he gave a check that is smart right uh just asking the thing hey where are you gonna go if you're still in the center you uh you might just uh receive some some questions about hey what you're gonna do so king f1 and this is the 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 trick or the tactical um tactical motive that uh fisher saw once again pause the video crazy crazy move uh think about it i hope you found it i do hope you find it because this is one hell of a move uh bishop e6 yes exactly queen sacrifice but there is one uh principle uh that worth knowing when it comes to uh calculation and when it comes to sacrificing for example a piece and in just like in this game okay take stakes if if you're going for a risky line uh it can be for example uh sacrifices it's always good to have like a sort of like a getaway plan okay like a plan b where i can i can go for a super safe line and for example like a draw or a repetition of moves and i can still get away with the game without losing the game right and this is what uh black did so uh of course if the original plan doesn't work i can still go for the draw and um so gave a check so here i always have a perpetual uh perpetual um check right so knight f4 92 and just uh, go back and forth back and forth uh but 
a black and another option knight takes d4 takes okay he he won a pawn but still the the principle works and now knight c3 okay knight c3 king g1 and now takes takes on b6 because what happened so the the queen is hanging from the rook the rook is hanging from the knight or by the knight and uh what's the evaluation uh the material is uh a rook and the bishop and two pawns for the queen is it worth it i would say so yes but if we uh if we um add this king and this rook into the occasion that it's that it's just worth even more okay so uh, the game still continued, but this was basically the gist of it. This is uh, two very, very important moments in the game uh, when uh, Fisher played knight a4, uh, when uh, white played bishop g5, and the other move was... Uh, I, actually, there were three... Um, you know points uh three moments and the second one was when uh black play knight takes e4 sacrificing the exchange and of course the third one was this queen sacrifice beautiful beautiful games of course i can talk about it a lot more uh, but i wanna uh, go over some tips for you and uh, so you can uh, you can um you can uh, understand this topic uh, a little better so the first one is don't be creative when you are underdeveloped and your king is in the center right that makes sense right you don't do any any funny stuff then okay just just finish development occupy the center uh, castle away put your king to safety and then you can you can be creative and, and start playing you know uh, more in of, a, of an active uh, manner okay and the second one uh, tempo moves uh, centralizing pieces are the first you should always examine okay I always try to give you tips after each uh, unit but yeah that was the first one um, sensing the moment let's move on to the next one